Now that we know how the note names are structured and how they move towards a higher and lower pitch, and we've been looking at that map, how they are structured in which order they come and with the, low, uh, with the sharps and the flats, we will now look at how to write this with music notation. You might have recognized this, uh, even though you may have never played uh, an instrument uh, by reading music, you may have seen that there are some lines and then you put notes on them. And depending on where you put them, they indicate a different name according to the note names that we looked at. These lines that you put them on, that's what's called the staff. And we will look at what that can look like right now. So this is what we call the staff and it's five different lines and those five lines we use to place notes on and we can only place them on a line or in between two lines. So not kind of on a line or right outside the whole staff. We need to put them either in the middle of a line or right in the middle in between two lines. That's the only two places where we can put it. Um, the different notes that we have are moving in different directions up and down and we'll look at how that gives us different note names. As you can see we have uh, five different lines and depending on where we put it we get a different note name and compared to the map of the note names that we looked at we were moving towards a higher or a lower pitch and the same thing goes here, but here it's up if we move to a higher pitch. So if we remember by the note names how it moved across towards a higher and lower pitch, that goes the same way here, but up and down. So obviously if you go down on the staff, you have a lower pitch. Now that gives us a certain amount of notes that we can get to. And we have five lines and some gaps in between, and that's where we can put notes but obviously we have more notes on a lot of different instruments. So we'll look at how to get to that if we reach the top line and if we want to go further towards a higher pitch. What we do then is that we, we can simply keep going. After the staff ends at the top line, we can keep going. But what we need to do then is to add an extra line and that's called a ledger line just as you can see here. And we have to write the note uh, at, in the same way, either on it or in between two of them. And we can also keep going towards a lower pitch and we then add on as many lines as we need in order to reach the note we want. So we can add one or more of these ledger lines and then put the note on them. On the different lines we have certain note names in certain places but that depends on if we're dealing with a treble staff or a different type but what we look at now is the thing that's called treble staff and then we recognize it by having this symbol right at the end uh, sorry at the beginning so this is how you would know that we find notes in specific places and if you have it in the beginning that means it's a treble staff, then we will find the notes on the same place as always. The starting point we had before was the uh, start of the alphabet, so we will relate to that now as well. And the A is found right here. And then, as you can see, I've lined up notes every second on a line and in between, on a line in between. And that's how it goes towards um, up to a higher or a lower pitch. And then it's very simple to figure out where we have the different ones. We just move across the alphabet like we did with the note names. So if we know where the A is, we can figure out where the rest of the notes are. And obviously if we go towards the lower pitches uh, from the A, then we would move backwards along those seven first letters of the alphabet. And this makes it, at the beginning, um, pretty easy to figure out, even if it takes a bit of time, as long as you have 
one place where you know where the note is, then you can just count your way. So for example, if you look at where you have the A, you'll find it right in between the second and the third line counting from below. So if you figure out just one place where you always would know which note that is, then you can just count your way on a line in between, on in between and so on until you reach the note that you want. We looked at the sharp notes before and the flat ones and we, when we write it we it's pretty simple because we just put that symbol right in front of the note on the staff. So like here if we're looking for the F that we want to make it sharp, then all we have to do is to put that symbol right in front of the note. But it's important to know that we need to put it in front and it needs to be in the same uh, same place as the note. So it needs to be on or in between the lines in the same place. It can't be a lot higher up on the staff. It needs to be right in front. And of course the same thing goes if we want a flat note then we would use the symbol for flat and would put it right in front of the note that we want to make flat. Now we might come across that we've had a flat or a sharp note and we want to play the natural note of the same note. So if we have that within the same bar we need to use a natural uh, sign and it's to make the note natural again. And it looks like this, and it's simply moving the, removing the sharp or the flat, and it's called the natural sign. So if we put that in front of the note, it's a natural note again. We will now look at how to connect the notes. Now when we have found where they are on the staff, how to write them and how they're organized with the note names, we will now look at where to find these on the piano. So we can actually start listening to what they sound like and start creating things with them. We will look at the, the treble staff as well and connect it to the piano keys. The first note that we'll start looking at is the one uh, that's called C and in this case the one that's called the middle C. Uh, the middle C is right where you see here on the first ledger line below the staff and that is found right in the middle of the piano on this uh, key. So if you want to have the starting point for that, you look in right in the middle of the piano and then you find this note. And it's related so that every C on the piano looks the same way. And as you can see here, it's a white key. That's the first one in the group of two black keys. So if you can see right next to the, the C, there are two black keys. And the same thing goes, if we line up all the notes, we will see that when we reach the next C, that will also be on a white key that is right to the left of two black keys, which makes it, after a while, pretty easy to recognize. And the same thing goes for the the notes as we looked at on the staff that if you know where one is then you can just count the alphabet and on the piano that's really simple because the natural notes the alphabet letters are found on the white keys so if you can find the C or if you can find the D or whatever note you find easier to always locate then you can start with that if you find it easy to find the D, which is in between the two black keys, then you can have that as a starting point. Uh, if you look at the two Ds that we have, they are always right in between where there are a group of two black keys. And it goes like that across the whole piano. 
So if you're able to know where one of these notes are on the keys, then you can count your way to the other ones. And of course the same thing goes here. If you want to have the, the sharp note, you just move to the right from that note. So the C sharp, for example, that will be the black key in between the C and the D, just as we looked at when doing that map over the note names. And if you want to have the A flat, you would have to move to the left. So you end up on the key right in between the A and the G.